Hi there. Welcome to Kali and the Gardener. We are not making mud puddles today. We are starting seeds. And I am going to be planting tomato seeds today, but this can apply to any seeds that you're starting indoors. Tomatoes are awesome plants that are kind of like the quintessential summer garden. You can do so many things with them. And we're going to be taking you from seed all the way to preservation in this series. So today we're going to be talking about why do you start tomatoes from seed? And the reason is if you go to the box store, you're going to have maybe just a few options. But I order my tomatoes from a company called Tomato Fast. I've always ordered from them, not any other catalog. And I certainly order from a lot of other catalogs, but Tomato Fest is a website that is solely dedicated towards tomatoes. It's just a place where tomato enthusiasts can go to find exactly what they need. What I love is the diversity of tomatoes. They have a dwarf tomato collection going on. So if you just have a balcony patio and you need to grow inside a pot, this is the place to go. They have a huge selection for those. For me, I grow a mixture of determinant tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes and even subclassify in my indeterminates between heirloom, slicers, and cherry tomatoes. So we grow, as you can see here, a huge number of tomatoes and I'm not done planting. I'm going to take you step by step. But the reason why I love this website, it is filled with education as well as an awesome amount of selection. I grow determinate tomatoes as my saucy tomatoes, stuff that I might make tomato sauce out of or soup bases. I also dehydrate some of those tomatoes and I'll use them as additives to the soups or as sort of a tomato paste later on. And we'll show you that because it's so easy to do. Determinant plants are wonderful because they're not growing to grow very tall and they give you a bunch of tomatoes at one time. So you're going to get a huge burst of production and then the plant's going to die. But that's okay because I can either replant tomatoes again in that area if I just get them started called successive planting or I could plant something different in that area once I've done my big harvest. So I think it's important to have a mixture of tomatoes. And so that is what I order for my determinate tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes are those cherry tomatoes that grow so tall and wide, they kind of take over. Or those beautiful beefsteak tomatoes or heirloom tomatoes, those can be indeterminate tomatoes. And that's what I grow in my garden. I look on his website, he also has them subclassified into early producers, intermediate producers or middle summer, and late producers. And for me, because my children love eating tomatoes like they're cherries off a tree, I look for early tomatoes. At most, I might buy a middle cycle or summer tomato. But really, I want production as fast as possible because we tend in central Washington to have no fall lately. It just goes straight into winter or an early snow and that can damage the plant or pretty much kill it. So let's go through how I start tomatoes. And whether you're in zone 7 or zone 9 or 10, you always want to start your tomatoes from seedling in a pot. And the reason for that is tomatoes grow really tall but the fabulous thing about their vine which you may not have noticed is that it can turn into a root itself depending on how deeply it's planted or if it falls over you might notice it's starting to develop roots into the soil i want a very deep and healthy root system for my tomatoes it will create a huge vine in those indeterminate tomatoes and a really healthy determinate tomato if i plant them deeply so once these little seedlings have started to grow, we're going to transition them, get them ready for outside, and then I'm gonna plant them in the garden and I'll have other videos showing this where I snip off those first two leaves and then we plant them down to that second row of leaves. And that is going to ensure great growth in the future. So I have here in different phases how I've started. This is where we're gonna end up and then these 
trays are going to go on heat mats. So let's get started from the beginning because whether you're planting tomato seeds or any other seed, the way I start my seeds indoors is so easy for anybody to do and have guaranteed success. And this method takes you all the way from germination to transplantation. There's no intermediate step of moving baby seedlings into peat pots that run the risk of transplantation so shock. So let's get started. Let me introduce to you my key players in easy germination to transplantation. So the first thing I want to show you that is essential for my start from germination to transplantation is these trays from Burpee. They're fantastic. I've used them now about four times and they are always successful for me. You can see this one's a little dirty but they have this silicone bottom to them with drainage and it's super soft because of course it's that plastic silicone and you can just pop those seedlings right out with as little trauma as possible it comes with this tray here that i can just put on any table it's going to be leak proof and catch the water i buy the size xl with the 16 trays in here the only complaint I saw in the reviews about this system is that it didn't come with a plastic dome. But as you can see here, my hack for that is super simple. It's already, even in 50 degree weather where I'm taping, creating a condensation layer. And all I used was just some kitchen plastic wrap over my labels and it will lock in that moisture. And then as the seedlings start to develop, I'll just kind of pull that plastic back to allow some moisture to evaporate out and some oxygen to kind of refresh and enter to prevent any sort of disease. And then once all of the seedlings have germinated, I'll just remove that plastic and throw it away. So don't be hesitant to buy this just based on the reviews. I have used it many times over with huge success. It's all I use to start my seeds. And if you're doing successive planting, once I get them out, I've got my next batch in and we're just moving with the flow. So the next step to growing your seedlings is to start them in the right medium. And you may have seen Rory kind of carrying away my seedling starting mix from miracle Grow in one of my videos. If not, I'll put the link below. He's super cute. It is essential for all my seed starts because it carries with it no chemicals. It tends to be weed free and it's the perfect way to start your seeds without burning them. It also can hold the right moisture in it so it's not going to drown them or at the same time dry out really fast if I forget about them. It's my go-to for starting. Because we're gonna be starting our seeds in these wells that are gonna carry us through to transplantation, I do need to add a little bit of nutrition into it. And the way I do that is with this worm casting soil. And I've already started using it, you can see, but I'll mix that in with the seed starting mixture about 50-50. It has a lot of nitrogen in it, and that is what is gonna give us that green growth that we're gonna see with those leaves that will help us get a good jump start into it. But it doesn't have any chemicals that are gonna burn up those seedlings either. So I found in combination with the both, it will carry me to transplantation beautifully without any nutrient deficiency. So when I am getting my soil ready, Ready. I just put it in a box, usually the box that the worm casting or soil came in, and I'll just dump it in. And that way it makes for easy storage and mixing it up. And you can see the dirt is super soft and aerated. I'm going to add a little bit more of that worm casting. It's so black and rich and moist right now. And it's going to help retain that moisture. And I just mix it in. Perfect. Okay. This is my empty wells. I'm just going to fill it up so easy. We do it over the box. It just catches everything so nicely. Maybe if we do it over the box. Okay, so right now it looks super perfect there, but the soil could be pushed down and moistened a little bit more and we can add more volume to it. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to water it now. I'm just going to get it super soaked.
allow that soil to just sort of absorb. Use a little more there. All right. So you can see it kind of pushed down. This is very arts and crafty sometimes. We have a lot more volume that we could add to it. And I might do this two or three times. It just kind of depends on how it manipulates and shrinks down. But by this end, I want it to be pretty full in each well. Like you're making mud puddles. We'll add one more time. And this is the only time I'm going to be potting these plants. So super easy. Okay. So there we go. A little bit of a mess. The next thing that I am going to do is finish putting in my tomato labels and in this one I didn't have the entire area planned out that's just the extent of it because I've planted already all of those I can come back later and I can add tomatillos to this area or eggplant that I'll be growing but for right now, I just wanted to focus on starting my tomatoes and they're gonna pop up super fast. The next step, we'll be adding our seeds. We have all the soil in right now. Definitely got it nice and moist the way we want it. I've got my labels in so that I can differentiate the plant that I'm growing, as well as I always put a D or an I down just to let me know if it's indeterminate or determinate. That way when I'm planting it in the garden, I know exactly what I'm growing because tomato seedlings don't all look alike, but once you've got about 50 or 60 of them, it's definitely hard to tell them apart. The other thing I love about this, because we're going from germination to transplantation, I don't have to worry about confusing things or keeping labels in places they're supposed to be. The label is going to travel with that little plant as it goes into the ground. So everything stays clear and lack of confusion. It also cuts out a step of buying peat pots to plant or having extra potting to plant. So even though these burpee pot systems might be a little more expensive, please remember one, you can reuse them time after time. So they will pay for themselves. Two, they take you from germination to transplantation. I think I just like saying that out loud. So I'm not buying intermediate pots that I'm going to lose because I plant them in the ground. I can easily pop out this plant as soon as it's ready to go. And I just think that the system is nice and clean when I bring it inside to put on the grow mats, super easy. And it stores really well because they're stackable. So let's get to planting our seeds. We'll do it in fast forward because it certainly is one of those things that takes me a little bit of time to get through, but is an enjoyable process when you see those seeds go from tiny little micro-sized tomato cherry seeds like I'm going to be planting next to these huge plants that stand over seven feet tall. Usually when I am planting in a well, I will plant three seeds to each well. And because I'm using tomato fest seeds, I pretty much always get 100% germination. They have really good quality seeds, but I always plant a little extra. I could probably get away with just one and do fine, but there's always human error on my part. It's very minimal with this system, but just in case, sometimes I think I get a seed in there and 
I don't. It's stuck to my finger. So if you're planting a few, then you know you've got yourself a winner by the end. All right, so we'll just keep watching. Okay, just a few done with the plastic saran wrap over it. This is such an easy part after the labels go in, the seeds are in. Now I'm just gonna blow that plastic wrap over it. Good layer, and you know that you have a good seal when you start seeing some moisture develop on the top. And this will be perfect while it's sitting on the heat mats. Do two layers for each of this. Perfect, so easy. The next step is just to go on our heat mat. Okay, we've moved indoors because those tomato seeds need their heat. And I've already set up my grow mats, super easy, just plugging them into an outlet. And two mats will hold four of these trays all together, which is what I need. I just finished with my pepper plants, move them off under the lights, and these are gonna go on next. And it's literally just as simple as putting them on. You can see this tray is already starting to develop condensation on the top, and that's an excellent sign that we have a really good seal with that saran wrap. As I'm watching over the next few days, and tomatoes go very quickly, so you wanna keep an eye out, they will start to sprout. As that sprouting begins, I'll sort of create a little vent in that plastic wrapping to allow some light in, some air circulation to help prevent fungus from forming in those trays. As all of the tomato seeds start to sprout and germinate and develop into little plants, I will move them off of these heating mats because they've done their job. And I'll move them under the grow lights for them to continue to grow. Even though we're in a glass room, so important that they get as much sunlight and energy or grow light energy as possible before we get them outside. So this is just the beginning step in our series of videos from germination to transplantation. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, we love your comments and continue watching.